I was wrong, and this is part four, the final part. All right. So getting you guys up to speed, I was talking about going to jail and how a lot of us young people of color think that it's a badge of honor. Well, I personally think it should be a badge of shame. Now, I'm not so old that I can't teach you guys right from wrong. I'm not so young that us older people can't really respect where I'm coming from. And the thing about life, life throws us all kinds of curveballs. Either you're going to hit it or you're going to get hit by it. So let me, let me put it to you in a politer way. We need a solution to multiple problems. But the problem we find the solution is that we have enough problems that no one really wants to try to find a solution. <clears throat> Excuse me. I gave you the solution to the transgender bathroom issue. Build more bathrooms. It's easier. It's probably not cheaper, but in the end, it'll be cost effective. And in that way, everyone will feel like they have a place that they belong for their most private moments. You know, because in all honesty, who wants to go to the bathroom and worry about someone attacking them in the bathroom because they think that a person of transgender is going to do something? Well, here's the thing, right? In most situations, it's generally not someone who lives an alternate lifestyle that's probably going to be the insane one that attacks you. As I said on other videos, if you're not safe in the house of God, you're not safe anywhere. And after I said the thing about the preacher who was preaching hatred and stuff like that, and you think that I'm insane for giving you all the intel that I give you. But here's the thing. Anything I say, if you don't believe it, you can probably Google it and you can find it. When it came to things like talking about The View, hey, look, The View is a badass show. The Real is a badass show. Steve Wilkos is a badass show. These people help us stay informed. I'm not really a big-ass TV watcher. And like I said, I only really watch things that's going to affect my life in hopefully a positive manner. I started watching The View a long time ago with, uh, I think her name was Stacey Mappanopoulos. That I don't know what the hell her name was. Debbie Cornbread. They had her on Celebrity Fights with the Clay People on MTV. And um, when Lisa Ling was there, I never stopped watching The View until she left. I still watch The View because they've had a slew of um, talk show hosts. You know, and I like the show. Same thing with The Real. I haven't liked a lot of the things that I have seen on The Real. But I still watch it because... The one thing that I said that I didn't really appreciate on the reel was when the lady who was supposed to be white that's supposed to be black was on there and everyone in the audience was only mad at her for being black when she wasn't black. But the thing about that, hold on, before you guys start writing all these badass comments on my fourth video, the thing about that is no one praised her for the shit she's done for the black community as a black woman who was actually a white woman pretending to be black. No one took the time to say thank you. Since I can't remember her name, let me speak for most of the black community because her maybe taking opportunities from her actually gave her opportunities to give us opportunities. And being head of the NAACP and them being white and black loaded yeah, a lot of people don't understand this, but um, some of the people in the NWACP are also white. You know, some of them, you have to have friends of different ethnicities when you're trying to get a minority group its place and its purpose because most people in a minority group don't understand the thing about fucking politics, all right? At the head of most politics, you will find a black person, a white person, or an Asian person. It just depends on where you are in the world. If you are in America, I can almost guarantee you that there is one of each in one politicsual form or another. And you may hate politicians. I'm not too fond of them myself. But, you know, those are the people who make the earth go around. Because the politics is how the money moves. And if you're politicsual, you know exactly what the hell I'm talking about or what I'm trying to say. Where if you're not politicsual, you have no clue what I'm saying and you could care two shits. But in the end... Let me thank the lady who was a white lady, passing as a black lady, giving black people opportunities that y'all claim she was stealing from us as well, which may be so, but in the end, 
She was working on getting us more college funds, making it easier for black people to go to college. And you're mad at her for the simple fact that she's just not really a black person. But she's in your fight. Fighting for you. So is it really that bad? A lot of people look at me and don't think that I'm black. I go through this shit every day. And if I'm standing by my mom, they know that there's no way in hell she's black. But they're wrong. Because she's mixed. And back when she was born, you were going to be black or you were going to be white. Well, her birth certificate says black, so hey. You can tell by looking at her that she was black. And a lot of people can't tell by looking at me that I'm black. Well, here's the thing. What is black anymore? Now, when you're an American, uh, most people who were born here and are black, I hate to be the buster of your fucking bubble. But most of you probably have some Native American or white in you due to the slavery um, thing. And some of the slaves were, and I ain't gonna lie about it, probably even some of my ancestors, were raped and molested. And those kids were taken into the family. Rather, they belong to the slave master or belong to the actual father. Rather, we like it or not, everyone in America who was born and bred here, not the immigrants that came in on... Easter Island or uh, whatever, the uh, Ellis Island in New York. Not, not those guys. Not the Chinese guys. Not the Japanese guys. Not the Arabians. Not the other white people from like England or Ireland or Scotland. Not them. But the ones that came here first. Some of them are in some of you. Now, whether you want to believe it or not, it's just your point of view. So, I should have ended it right there. To make the ladies of the view happy, but I'm not gonna do that. See, I'm gonna I'm gonna go all the way out the way I intend on going out, because I won't, don't want the view to be mad at me or anything. Because that is like one of my favorite shows. I've been watching y'all since y'all came out. Anyway, as I was saying, because I did mention Lisa Link, she was always my favorite. She was probably the only one I could really relate to because we were about the same age. But anyway, as I was saying, you know, there are a lot of things in this world that we just refuse to find a simple solution to. And like I said, because it's basically all red tape politics. And I'm going to call it red tape politics because being a former member of the military, there are a lot of politics that soldiers aren't allowed to speak of. Simple as that. You soldiers know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. We're not allowed to speak of certain things. So at the end of our lives, you know, who <laughs> give a fuck? It's going to be time to go ahead and speak. So, I'm going to give a fuck right now and tell you guys, <coughs> <coughs> if we all sit back and try to listen and speak one at a time, instead of trying to all have that big cluster fuck in the room where we're all just talking and no one's addressing the elephant in the room, which is the real issue, because no one wants to hear what the other people have to say. That's the issue. Everybody's talking. No one's listening. So, how can you fix this? Here's how you fix this. First, everyone in the room, look at the person next to you. Make sure you can see their face. Make sure they're not suffering from head or ass syndrome. Ask them a question of how they personally feel about the things that I have addressed it. The transgender bathrooms, racism, sexism, uh, anything that I've missed, you know. Ask them something. Did you personally feel a certain way about it? And then, after they explain how they feel about it, and if it's the same issue you have, explain to them how you feel about it. If I may quote from Mass Effect, be like the Geth. We are thousands of eyes looking at thousands of points of view. And then, take the consensus and form one that actually works for all. But see, that's too much like right. It's too much... Uh, Making people more like drones instead of having individuality. Okay, well, here's the thing. I completely support individuality. Without question. We all have the right to have our own thoughts, our own opinions, and that's cool. But sometimes your thoughts and your opinions can be offensive and harmful. And no one wants to address that fact that we're all too pig-headed. Or, if I may follow what I said before, fuss knees. Damn, it sucks. Excuse me. <laughs> Glad it wasn't my cameraman there. He would have got a good one. Anyway, 
we all have to find a way to take our heads out of our asses and listen to everybody's point of view. And then, after you record everybody's point of view and have someone write down just one guy who's like completely fucking neutral to everything that everyone says, have him write down everything or have one of those court stenographer peoples. I'm not saying it correctly, so bite me. Anyway, have one of those court typewriting people type down everything that everybody said, and they must have the most horrible-ass job in the world to hear everything and be able to type and capture all it. Yeah, good luck with that. Anyway, have them write down everything and see how many views are exactly the same. And go with that. Because that way, you can see if ten people feel this way and three people feel that way, you might want to go with the ten people as they convince the three people why it should be this way. Now, I'm going to personally tell you on the whole gender identity and bathroom thing, look, there's two things that define a man and a woman. Their gender and their brain. Alright? But we all seem to leave off that third thing. Alright? That third thing is heart. Alright? You can't look at a person and tell if they're transgender. You don't know what they're going through because you're not. You can't look at a person and tell if they're gay or straight. You can't feel what they feel because you're not. But their heart doesn't feel what you feel because they're feeling ostracized and they're thinking, well, this guy thinks I'm like creepy little Waldo and everyone's trying to find me. Okay, that's a possibility. But here's the thing. We kind of feel the same way. We kind of feel like we don't really fit your bill and don't understand you. So what's the problem? No one understands anyone. You know why no one understands anyone? Because no one wants to take their head out of their ass and listen. I'm James Williams Jr. This is Comfort Habit number two. B, C, and U.